Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Cryptozoology for Beginners. This was sent to me by uh, Cryptozoic Entertainment, and it's designed by Corey Jones, Ben Stahl, and Matteo Wilson. Your photography class has embarked on a mysterious field trip to study the hidden habits of cryptids and learn about their supernatural antics. Gather your friends for a card drafting, set collecting, token gathering game based on the art of Stephen Rhodes. Will you complete the toughest assignments and gather the most point tokens to be crowned teacher's pet? Or will you get left behind and become some creature's new best friend? Let me show you how to play. So in this game, you are trying to draft and play cards and earn points. This is the starting player to token. You randomly choose who goes first. And then, at the beginning, each player gets two assignments face down. You look at them, and you're gonna choose one to place face up in front of you as your private assignment, and one to place face up in the public assignment. So let's say I go, mm, okay, I'm gonna take this one, and this one goes face up in front of me. The other one will go in the middle as a public, as public assignment. So let's say we got, you know, a couple public assignments here uh, in the middle, and everyone has their own private assignment. Then everyone gets eight cryptid cards from the deck. And then you do classic drafting, where on your turn, you pick a card, and then you put it face down in front of you, and you hand it over to your left uh, until you do that eight times. So since I'm going for Mothman on my card here, uh, I would try to see if there's a Mothman card. Uh, there is not. Uh, so instead, I might go for one of these goals. So we got Chupacabras, okay. I'll, I'll take a chupacabra, put a face down, pass the cards. You do that eight times, uh, or seven times, I guess, until uh, everyone has drafted all their hands. Each cryptid card comes in four different colors, red, blue, yellow, and green. Um, and uh, they also have different uh, cryptid abilities and types, uh, as you can see by the symbols in the top left. Once everyone has drafted, then you take the cards into your hand um, and each player takes a turn playing a card. So on your turn, you reveal a card and place it face down, in, or place it face up in front of you. So I could play this Chupacabra, play it like that. Then you can activate any abilities if you had any cards. Let's say I had enough to do this ability. Um, on a subsequent turn, let's say, uh, let me grab, I don't know. Wow, there are no Chupacabras. That would have been real tough uh, for them if they were trying to go for the goals. Anyway, uh, let's say I play down a third Chupacabra in front of me. I can decide to uh, tap them uh, for this ability. Tap three Chupacabras, discard any card in play, its owner draws a card. So I could do that. I could choose one of my cards, or I could choose an opponent's card. They discard it, and then they have to uh, draw a card. If you complete any of the assignments, uh, you can claim it uh, in front of you. So if I had four chupacabras, which I cannot find these damn chupacabras. Okay, let's say I to put down my fourth chupacabra. Hey, that's a goal. So I complete this assignment, and I put it in front of me uh, sideways to show that I have completed it. This particular assignment also has a bonus effect in that you get uh, some points and then at the end of the round you get to choose one, gain one reward token, or keep one of your chupacabras in play for the next round, which is pretty useful if you can manage to do it. Um, once you are out of cards in your hand, then you're done. Your turn is skipped. Uh, there are card effects that let you draw new cards, so everyone might have an unequal number of turns. Uh, once everyone has gone through, played all their cards, triggered their abilities, uh, and or gotten their assignments, then that's the end of the round. Gather all the cards and discard them. Keep your completed uh, assignments. All uncomplete, uh, completed public assignments are left there and will remain there for the rest of the game uh, as you add more public assignments there. Uh, you pass the bus token to whoever has the fewest points from completed assignments, and you play three rounds. Uh, these reward tokens, I forgot to mention, these are random values, uh, so these would all be actually turned over in the actual game. But uh, yeah, they're a random number of points, usually ranging from about three to six. And at the end of the game, the most points is the winner. Uh, if there's a tie, whoever has the most completed assignments and reward tokens. So that's the game, you just draft, play cards, trigger their abilities, but let's go through some of the different abilities and assignments. Um, Nessie, if you tap two Nessie cards, you can draw a card. 
uh, Seclusion of Sasquatch. If you have three Sasquatch cards, gain two reward tokens, then return any one of your rewards. Uh, the Book of Cryptozoology. At the end of the round, if you have only one book in play, gain one reward token. Jersey Devil. Uh, it's colorless. Draw four cards and put one in your hand, then randomly add one to each other player's hand. Discard the rest. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of different special abilities. And then you also have different types of assignments. Like this is four pairs of different types. If you do that, you get 10 points. Two yellow cards, two chupacabra. That gives you two points. Um, and that's pretty much it. You just uh, draft, play cards, tap them. Uh, play cards one by one and tap abilities and until you run out of cards and then just try to score points and assignments. And that's the game. So this was a game I thought I would like from hearing the rules, but after playing it, it really felt flat. Drafting is usually, you know, a fun mechanic, but it alone couldn't do much. The private assignment thing feels contradictory because they're public in front of you. I know they're not shared goals, but everyone can see what you're trying to go for. So people are just actively stopping you from doing them if they can. That and some of the assignments are so absurdly difficult. Like there's one that's like five matching colors, which is almost impossible when you only have eight cards to draft and everyone can see what you're trying to do anyway, so they'll either try to block you or whatever, or you just don't get the right cards in any of the hands. Uh, because all the goals are public, oftentimes it just ends up that no one has enough to score much of them or use very much abilities. Uh, using an ability requires uh, so many cards, like some of them require three cards, that you're almost definitely gonna just be limited to like one ability per round, if that. Because uh, again, yeah, it's hard to get them to match if one, the cards just won't enter play, and two, uh, it just takes so much, you know, uh, cards to use one ability. The concept of taking the turns and trying to do the right timing, that's not bad, but it's still a very bland game. I could easily see this being a game I really like. Maybe if there were more, like, untapping, like if I do this, I could untap and maybe do a little more combo play, or... I don't know, because I, I like drafting, I like using abilities to maximize your turns. I even enjoy set matching, but with so few cards to work with and everything being out in the open, you have almost nothing to work with. This either needed more cards, so you had some more options, uh, or some secrecy, so you could at least plan something and pull off some kind of surprise. As it is, it's pretty dull. It's just drafting a handful of cards, hoping you get stuff, and... Oftentimes it's just futility.